Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Flash photography. Is it difficult for you? Do you struggle with how to get good exposures every time? I've got the answer for you today. I'm going to make it completely easy. I've got five steps for you using this guy that will allow you to meter your flash photography perfectly, repeatably, every time. Let's get a cup of coffee and get to it. Okay, if you're not familiar with this, it's an incident light meter, flash meter. Many do both, some don't do both. If you don't have one, I'm gonna have some links below to several of them. You have to make sure that they can meter flash. Now, I'm gonna be talking about the functions on this meter. It, it, your meter may not be the same, it may not do things exactly the same way. That's not a problem. You may have to Don't even say it. read your manual to find the functions I'm talking about. If it's a flash meter, it will have these functions. When I demonstrate these techniques on how to meter and adjust flash, I'm gonna be using the simplest possible setup, using what I love as my basic flash that I recommend for beginners that I've done in a previous video, I'll link to it. It's just a single flash with an umbrella and we're going to show how meter adjust, meter adjust works and the effects of it. Okay, here we go. Step one, determine your ambient or base exposure. Whoa, ambient or base exposure? What the heck are you talking about? Ba Basically, that's the amount of light that is already in the area you're gonna be using to photograph. For this example, I recommend the least amount of light possible. So you're only working with the output of the flash. Reduce the variables, make it simpler, right? So you have to set your meter to the incident mode and measure the light where your subject is going to be. So if I were to, if I were to do this right now, I would hold the meter up to my face dome out, press the metering button, and that will tell me f-stop shutter speed of where the light is right now. In the next step, we're going to talk about what you want it to be. But for right now, you need to know how much light exists where you're trying to shoot. Why dome out? The dome simulates a face, right? It's semi-curved, so it captures all the light from light to dark, just as your face does from light to dark. If the dome is in, it can only record what you're aiming at. Step two, decide on your desired exposure. I'm going to use the example that I like to shoot at. As to why, again, that's the subject of another video, but for our purpose is right now, I like to shoot at f11 at 1 1 25th of a second at an ISO between 100 and 250. If you were to expose an image at those settings without flash, you would get this. Oh my, what happened? Turn on the lights. There is nothing to see, and that's what you want so you can determine exactly what your flash is doing. Like I said earlier, limit the variables, learn flash by working with only flash without balancing it with any other light for right now. Step three, set your meter to the trigger mode for flash. On my meter, there's two different modes, one for cord and one for wireless trigger. The idea is that you want the meter to be able to record your flash exposure when you push the metering button. Now, the triggering part is it's trying to trigger your flash. You don't have to trigger a flash with the meter. You can quickly push the button and trigger your flash and it will measure the amount of flash. Step four, trigger and measure until the flash is getting your desired exposure. So on your meter, on my meter, there is an indicator for what percentage of the exposure is flash. And when we're working indoors, as we are throughout this entire exercise, it will always be 100%. 
In the future, we'll talk about mixing, like I said earlier, ambient light with your flash. And if we were doing that, like if we were working outside, the, some percentage of your exposure would be flash and some would be ambient light. Doesn't apply to what we're doing right now. Step five, test exposure and adjust to taste. Flash photography, like much of all photography, is a recipe, not a rule. You're going to find that the technical rigid steps will get you really close to where you want to go and then the artist has to take over and season to taste and you may have to adjust the flash volume, amount, distance, angle, the, the reflection, the fill, whatever. It's all to taste after you get the basic exposure nailed. Okay, so the next step is moving this forward and using it to create a one light portrait. One light portraits are beautiful and elegant and that's going to be our next step. If you want to take your flash photography to the next level to create perfect flash using one light, hit subscribe, click the notification button, and you'll be ready when the video is done. Hey, thanks for watching. Until the next video, cheers.